e5 followed by bishop takes b2 and i think i think that just um okay so mr snickle i think you're probably watching the stream right Topolov is Svedlife's favorite player. Um, I can respect that. He's an exciting player. I mean, how many of these guys are really, truly exciting players? Not so many. I mean, you know, they've got to be careful every game not to lose their rating points. So they're not, you know, these players aren't taking, like, like taking, they don't like taking huge risks every game. Topolov is one of the players who's willing to play really sharp chess. And it's not that common these days over 2700 to play ultra sharp games. Anish Giri is another interesting player. I like the fact that he plays very sharp games. Um, I like Kramnik. I, I, and I don't talk about Kramnik just because he's like my favorite player or something. Just talking practically about who can actually beat Carlsen in a match, Kramnik is one of those people. Um, it's just coincidence that he went to second in the world. It's kind of funny. Um, how this happened right now at this moment when it's become really relevant. And I've been talking about Kramnik and the World Championship so much, and then I noticed today he's not in. But anyway, back to the game. It's um, 8-5 classical. Guys, I'd like to play these longer games because we have time to really focus on the strategic things. Um, Mr. Stickle should not let me grab his dark squared bishop. It's like a free pass. It's like, um, to say, a walk. I've just got this dark squared bishop and you never have any compensation. The bishop on g7 just dominating the board. White will have to play defensively for the rest of the game. Unless black does something, you know, drastically wrong. And, um, like if I were to, to drastically weaken my position with something like e5 or trade my dark squared bishop. Redstone 2004. I have the dragon. It's a jolly joker, we call it here in Hungary. Probably elsewhere. The Jolly Joker may originate, for all I know, it like originates in Germany. A lot of terminology here in Hungary um, is like linguistically borrowed from other places like Germany. Okay, rook on a to c8. I'm going to get the c file. Um, I've got to watch out for certain things, you know, like f5, f5, e5, the d6 pawn. So basically, what black has to do is keep everything under control watch out for my weak points you know like f5 breaks e5 d6 square and then slowly start to like um gain space and turn the tables on white more or less open up the position for my bishops is another thing i'm thinking about rook on f to d8 but i want to watch out for f5 i mean is f5 going to be a problem maybe my rook might might be needed on e8 as well so, it's not such an easy position um, for me. Not so easy. Miss Snickle has a lot of pressure on... It's so hard to pronounce that, Miss, Mr. Snickle. It's, it's awkward. Um, I think White's only chance is to play for f5. But I don't know when he should do it. Maybe now? Um, it's a clear pawn sack. But I don't think I can take it because it would be like pawn takes f5, knight d5... And queen b8, I mean, my queen is really out of play over there. So he didn't do it. Maybe he's saving it for later. And knight a5, knight b4. I'm not sure what knight b4 does. And knight a5 with the idea of knight c4. Um, still, I have to watch out for my, my pawn. Um, I'm going to play this here. Kind of waiting move, king h8. GM Wilwolf, I kind of want to go over to Russia and attend like their chess schools. Yeah, it's really bad that this whole thing is happening now with um, the World Championship, with Russian and American players, and there's this political Cold War going on. Um, it's really bad timing, actually, for there to be like this World Chess um, Championship and you know, events being held, I mean, it's good in a way, I and mean, it's also bad in a way, you know, it's good for interrelations that, that we're holding sporting events together, but unfortunately, there's a lot of complications due to these political influences. Um, Bishop b3, 
hard for me to prog make progress because I don't really have a pawn break. I'm going to have to play for b5. I really should have done this earlier, to be honest with you guys. I really should have been playing b5 earlier. Yeah, Redstone was asking a long time ago. Thank you, Redstone. b5. b5 should have been my plan um, quite some time ago. So I've been a little a little late with the b5 idea. Hey, the European Individual Championship will be in Kosovo, in case you want to participate. Wow, when is the date for that, Liberian? Um, very interesting. A few years ago, it was in Rijeka, and I really was sorry that I didn't go. Um, can you speak Hungarian? Igan. I speak pretty well now, um, but my written Hungarian is like non-existent. I play like live poker with Hungarians where everyone's speaking Hungarian. So after a few years of doing that, um, I've become pretty fluent. So 11th to the 24th of May. Wow, that's really interesting. It's not impossible that I couldn't play Liberian. Um, or at least go to visit. That's a good time for me, probably. Have not played it yet, but I play the Night Orf a lot. So Liberian was just talking about a great tournament. They have they have every year they have the European Individual Championship, and you know as opposed to like the Team Championship, and it's in Kosovo. So in May, May is a good time. Um, thanks for the info, Liberian. I should play one of these days. I think I might have a problem, though. I have to change my federation to Hungary. I'd have to do it, like, real fast. Um, which I don't have a problem with, because I'm, I'm not really living in the United States for a long time, so. Uh, I think I have to change my federation to Hungary if I want to play in the European Individual Championship. But I'm sure for a few foreigns, they'd be willing to do it. I live in Eastern Europe. Money can get you everywhere. Um, but I have every right to be like playing for the Hungarian Federation since I've been living here for like 12 years. To be honest though, I kind of kept my US uh, affiliation because in a lot of cases, the thing is that uh, organizers here in Hungary need foreign players to organize closed tournaments. So the fact that I have an American Federation is is a real savior, savior um, to a lot of organizers where I've played in their tournaments and stuff. They need a foreign player, and I'm sitting here, and I'm available, and uh, and that's, that's the problem. It's too bad we can't have multiple uh, residency. I think Miss Snickel just panicked. That's why I always keep all my pieces defended. Just in case something happens. My A6 pawn isn't protected, but that's okay. Maybe I should take that bishop on B3. It doesn't look real good, though. So I think I'm going to I'm going to rally for multiple nationality, multiple chess federation nationalities. Maybe I should become a chess politician. I think that's where the money is, by the way. Um uh, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Oh yeah, because money is not that important um to me. I would have done something else other than chess if money was my main goal. Let's see. What if I take on B3 and then I just snack on another it's not my move first of all um it's good when it's your move it's generally better if it's your move to make a move you guys i told you stories about how i have a tendency to um try to make moves when it's not my turn mr nickel got in trouble here well you can call it bribes if you want but i mean you know um, 
there are legitimate ways to make money from being involved in chess politics, I guess. It doesn't necessarily have to be bribes, per se. I mean, Sepp Blatter never did a thing wrong in his life. Um, he's the most honest person in the world. I don't, I don't think there's one sporting organization in the world that's not corrupt, you know? Or maybe organization, period. Organizations just, by their nature, um, lend themselves to corruption. Even charities are corrupt. Okay, it's it's getting a little... I'm getting a little negative now. Um, there are a lot of good charities out there. Okay, we've got a lot of challenges, guys. Welcome to the stream. I'm International Master William Pascal, coming to you live from Budapest, Hungary. If you want to challenge me, feel free to, uh, to do so from Lee Chess. To do is challenge me to a game anywhere between like five minutes with a two second increment up until a 10 minutes with a three second increment something like that i have a number of challengers i don't know who was first there's pete stew r4 and dumb and dr cal and unfortunately guys i don't know who's first i could do rock paper scissors or something to determine i'm just gonna just pick one randomly Good game. I think you should have played F5 there, um, for better or for worse, even if it was like when my queen was on C7. So P2 is playing E5. It's like some kind of a weird kind of gambit. I don't know what this is called. Um, I'm going to just play Knight F3. This is a fairly solid way to react to this thing. It's like... Uh, Crazy Gambit. Um, I don't recommend playing it in 510 classical. I'm going to play a Fianchetto, Queen's Indian type of setup here. I want to get all my pieces moving. Uh, I could also play d4, but in that kind of position, I feel that my my bishop on the queen side has trouble getting in the game. It's going to have trouble now. I'm going to have trouble getting my knight in the game. This is a common Queen's Indian. Um, the common Queen's Indian problem is that the uh, the knight on the queen side has trouble getting in the game. You have to put it on a3 or d2. I guess d2 is fine here. Las Hazior has come up with a name for this thing. Okay, knight b4 doesn't really look right. I'm going to kick it out with a3. Not the most weakening move in the world. I can afford to play a3. And he played knight a6, which is fine by me. Um, we could we could play b4 here, kind of take a page out of... If you guys see the video I did on video chess training, um, I talked about a game that Dmitry Yakovenko played against Alexander Kostinyuk. She It was a Slav structure. She had like c6 here, and he, he got this structure with a3 and b4 which very much like made life difficult for the knight on a6. But I don't really see the need to have to do that. And by the way, speaking of Yakovenko, he's the um, he's the reserve for the World Championship uh, Candidates Tournament in Moscow. So not a, not a bad player, um, to say the least. So if somebody pulls out or gets sick, Yakovenko would be the next one because he was like third in the World Cup, I think after Nakamura and Caruana or whatever um, okay so this knight is just all over the place Pied Stu is a provisionally rated over four games so we don't know how good he is how's the weather in Budapest dragon old it's interesting that you asked that we had 10 days of rain and then yesterday was like the most beautiful day in the world and then we're going to have like another five days of rain. So, how is the weather where you are? Yesterday was like the first day I wanted to open the windows in like a month. Night on B to D2. Yeah, so we solved our Queen's Indian problem. I'm getting that piece in the game. 